We appreciate your cooperation. You're a very compliant group today. We <laughs> very, very much appreciate it. And those of you in the back, we appreciate uh, knowing that, hey, this is not going to take very long. This is going to be a pithy and straight to the point uh, production today. So welcome everyone to the Newark campus of Central Ohio Technical College and The Ohio State University. I'm Don John Berry and I serve as the president at Central Ohio Technical College. I want to thank each and every one of you for your attendance today. With this event, we mark a very exciting moment. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to recognize the culmination of a great deal of collaboration and hard work. Today, we'll learn about the curricular design and corresponding career pathways that will help secure the future of the semiconductor industry in the great state of Ohio. It's a time that we have all worked together to create, and the next pipeline of Ohio's high-tech heroes who will power the semiconductor industry for generations to come starts today. So very excited about that. So today you will hear from several individuals who have been instrumental in the design and or the support of the efforts to make this possibility happen. So before I have the opportunity to call upon and welcome our Lieutenant Governor to the podium, I would like to acknowledge just a few other special guests that are here today. I know that we have many members of the Ohio Semiconductor Network team who worked on this process. If you could raise your hand for us. Appreciate each and every one of you and all the work that you did. Um, we also have members of the Ohio Semiconductor Network Curriculum Development Group. If you're here, if you could just raise your hand for us as well. Much appreciate your very good work. I know that we actually have some political representatives here. I know that Representative Claggett is here. If you happen to be a political representative, you could raise your hand for us and we will acknowledge you as well. Thank you very much, appreciate that. All right, well we have one hour of time together and we're going to try to maximize that as we go. It is my pleasure to now introduce to you, uh, it is my honor as well to introduce the Lieutenant Governor of Ohio, John Houston. Ohio's community colleges, indeed all of Ohioans, are fortunate to have a leader like Lieutenant Governor John Houston to spearhead our state's workforce development efforts. Prior to serving as a Lieutenant Governor, he was the Ohio Secretary of State and served as a state senator and a speaker of the House of Representatives. During his time as speaker, John Houston was a strong advocate for higher education, and now in addition to his role as Lieutenant Governor, he also serves as the Director of Innovate Ohio and oversees the state's Common Sense Initiatives and Office of Workforce Transformation. In all of these roles, he has been a strong and much appreciated champion for strengthening higher education in our state. Please join me in thanking Lieutenant Houston as he comes to the podium today. I love that Ohio bow tie. That's a good looking tie right there. Can't believe I don't have one of those, goodness. Um, well, thank you for the kind introduction. It's great to be with so many of our teammates today. I was literally on the phone with the governor while I was sitting in the parking lot finishing up something. He sends his regards. I know that he's excited about all that we are doing in bringing business and education together to help the people of the state of Ohio uh, earn the skills it's gonna take them uh, that will take them a long way uh, into the future and, and uh, filling the many, many jobs that we are creating in this state. I, I want to send my uh, gratitude to Intel and, and their continuing and growing partnership that they have with the state of Ohio uh, and uh, Jobs Ohio and, and uh, all of our community colleges and education leaders that are here today. Um, and, and, and that's how I want to open up because I remember when we had this announcement uh, in uh, last year in January that Intel was coming to Ohio. And what happened immediately? People said, well, where can I get one of those jobs? And they asked the question, well, what kinds of skills will I need? Who's going to train me to do these things? Uh, where do I need to go? Well, all of those questions are being answered today, at least in part, with what we're talking about. Um, it, it is designed, this day is designed to talk about some of the partnerships, what the money that Intel has invested in here, uh, and our community colleges are going to do working together to build these pathways in advanced manufacturing. Um, I know that among those issues will be, th those opportunities will be micro-credentials, one-year certificates for becoming an Intel entry technician, an associate's degree in applied science, uh, and 
bachelor's degrees in applied science, engineers, many other pathways that are going to be discussed today by our uh, participants. I know we have many people uh, they are going to be part of this discussion today and I won't steal all of their thunder because I know that they have some things that they want to talk about. But I will, I will say this, um, Ohio is committed to building the greatest workforce in the Midwest. I mean, that's our aspiration. We want, when you think of the Midwest, we want to be the Silicon Heartland, as Pat Gelsinger described us, but we want to be the economic juggernaut of the Midwest. We want to have the best educated and trained workforce in the Midwest. That's our aspiration. And also have those values that people love about the Midwest. Hard work, honesty, integrity, kindness, friendliness, all the things that make uh, living and working in the Midwest a wonderful thing. And um, we, have, we have many, many pathways. The, the, there's one message that, that I will send to, out there today is that the, re and the reason that I love working on economic development and workforce development is because when we get it right, everyone wins because businesses get the talent they need to succeed and people get the skills to live their version of the American dream doing whatever, wherever, whatever they want, wherever their passion takes them. And that's what we're talking about today. And I want to thank the legislature for uh, the investment they made recently in the state budget to expand our career centers so that every child who wants to graduate job ready out of high school has a chance to do that. To thank them for the money they put in the Super Rapids program, which is going to help our colleges and universities invest in the machinery and equipment that they, they need to help prepare their workforce for the future. Um, continuing our Choose Ohio First Scholarship. See, this, what you're going to see a lot today is we're talking about engineering and science and applied science. We started a STEM scholarship in Ohio in 2007 before anyone even really knew what STEM was. And we've been pushing that and helping that and, uh, along over the years. And 80% of the students who graduate with a Choose Ohio First Scholarship in STEM stay in Ohio. And now that we have more companies like Intel, there's going to be more places for them to go. And I think we'll even have a higher number of that, of the students who stay and work here. And then as we talk about lifelong learning in Ohio, every adult in our state can earn an in-demand tech credential through the tech cred program. No matter where you are in the state, every corner of the state, every Ohio resident has the opportunity to earn an in-demand tech credential at no charge to them thanks to the generosity of the taxpayers of the state. We expanded computer science in this budget too to make sure every single high school and junior high student has access to a computer science education. These are just some of the things that we are doing to move Ohio forward uh, from an education, workforce, and economic point of view. And uh, the collaborators in this room are a big part of it. They're creating the programs, making sure that Intel tells us what they need and then our colleges are designing the programs so that people can go have access to get that training and leave here and go to work. And uh, I know the construction's coming along very well, so that day is getting closer and closer and closer when you will need those skills and need that talent. And it's really exciting for our, our state uh, to have that right around the corner. And as part of the collaboration team, uh, I would like to introduce uh, someone who I've worked with a long time uh, over the years on, on many issues. Um, he is the leader of the Ohio Association of Community Colleges. And so let me turn it over to Jack Hershey, uh, who is the president of that association. Jack. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, I remember when the announcement was first made, you gave me a call and said, be prepared to move fast. That is the uh, corporate culture of Intel and of this industry. And I said, of course, we always move fast. He's like, no, 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 you're gonna move fast. Um, and so today, I think we really are here to celebrate the speed at which we have moved, uh, the speed at which the state of Ohio has moved, the speed at, speed at which um, the education community at large has moved. Uh, in September of last year, Intel presented us with an exciting opportunity uh, 
um, and a time-sensitive challenge. The company charged the Ohio Semiconductor Collaboration Network, a program created by our association to add semiconductor specific courses and equipment to existing engineering technology and advanced manufacturing programs. The goal was to meet the expected demand for thousands of new semiconductor industry employees at the two fabs now being built here in Licking County and to help the entire ecosystem. This is bigger than just Intel, quite honestly. A lot of our colleges are excited about the expanded benefits of having this brand new industry in our state. To meet the challenge, the network called together a statewide team of community college faculty experts, partnered with uh, them with experts from Intel who know this business very well, uh, to develop new courses and new curriculum that would fit into what we already do. Uh, I'm pleased to say that not only did we meet the challenge and meet it at record speed, which I'll talk about in a second, but we also offered um, what we developed to the world. Um, so at no cost, our curriculum is being shared with K through 12, is being shared with the career centers across the state, is being shared uh, with the Ohio Technical Centers. There are lots of pathways that people can take to work in this field. Um, we hope at some point that pathway will lead you through a community college, but no matter where you start, um, we have been purposeful in designing this so that it fits the amount of training you need in order to work in this field. Among the training and degrees being offered through the network's uh, curriculum, you heard the Lieutenant Governor mention it. it, it is designed in chunks. You can, some people will need a course or two in order to work here. Some people will want the full associate degree. Uh, and I think what we've learned from working with Intel over this past year is the amount of people we run into who have spent years working in Intel and have moved up through the ranks through promotions is, is noticeable to us. And so in our design, we have thought very carefully about when people will get entry into the field and then what additional training they will need and how do they come back to us in order to get that in a way that is seamless and beneficial both to uh, them and the industry. I want to say one thing uh, about the speed and to do a few thank yous on this. Um, you know, we don't have this industry in Ohio. Uh, we had to start from scratch in terms of putting all of this curriculum together. That's exciting and daunting at the same time. Um, the speed at which this happened is amazing, right? Uh, I hope that we have met Intel's uh, expectations of us in terms of how quickly we have gotten this up and going. That did not happen just by ourselves. Um, the state of Ohio, uh, Office of Workforce Transformation, the Department of Higher Ed did amazing work in getting the curriculum approved in time frames we have never seen before out of the state of Ohio. Um, not only did they get it approved, uh, the Department of Higher Education, uh, a thank you to, our, to them and to the universities across the state. The universities bless the curriculum so that it will, uh, it is transfer friendly for all of those students and all of this happened in six or seven months. I don't know what the previous record was, but it blew it away in order to be done in six or seven months. So thank you to the team. Uh, thank you to all of our education partners. We are a collaboration network. We know that this is a, a big lift and we are designing it up front with everybody in mind. Um, with that, I'm gonna introduce Dr. Rick Woodfield who has led the efforts on our behalf, and he will walk you through the new curriculum and the new uh, courses that we are offering. Thank you. It's great to be here. Um, I'm among a lot of friends, and I humbly uh, represent them who did a lot of this work this year. So as Jack was saying, this has been an amazing uh, uh, expeditious effort on faculty, on uh, industry partners, and on education collaborators across the state. So I'm, I'm very happy and proud to be up here talking a little bit about, about what we did. Um, so the partnership, right? So we started off, as Jack said, not having a lot of deep knowledge of this industry sector. Uh, so we, we brought together with the CAOs from the, from the state faculty of interest, and we asked our colleagues in the West Coast to look at those faculty uh, dossiers and tell us which six would be a really the best panel we could put forward. So we, we used outside references right from the get-go to make sure we had the right people um, on that panel. 
and then we hired uh, an Intel, uh, uh, former Intel employee, and then we started really rolling up our sleeves in December. So you really get a sense of how quick this came together. Um, the efforts that we did as we brought that work together really needed to have Intel's blessing, and we had it every step of the way. So they sat through uh, hours of meetings, uh, they reviewed curriculum uh, uh, at their own, uh, gave us lots of feedback and a lot of validation of what we were doing to put that together in a way that made sense. We didn't invent the wheel. We went out there and looked at national best practices and, uh, and, and what was available to us, and we, as good higher education people, stole with references, right? We are happy to, to, to be um, a, a conduit of this, internet, uh, this national information, and we will share and have been sharing that information as we go forward. So it's a really a vital interest to our state, but also to our nation and, and, and the world that we get this right and we figure out how to produce uh, uh, STEM sector, um, tech sec sector uh, uh, workforce that in, in a way that makes a lot of sense. Um, and we also knew that we had to reach a broader set cross section of Ohio. Uh, the traditional engineering tech pathway was excluding a lot of people. So we wanted to make sure our designed uh, was as inclusive as possible. And we knew from the get-go what we had to pay, pay attention to. So we wanted to put together a curriculum that any one of our 23 colleges in our, in our membership, as well as any other career center, could modularize parts of that curriculum and use it for what they need in their region. So all of this was centered on uh, the, the task that Intel gave us was to create the ecosystem not just create employees for, for Intel, but to look at the entire state and say, what do we need in this workforce that really matters? What skills, what will lead to good employee candidates for Intel will lead to good employee candidates for a lot of industry across the state. So very important in our work. So um, we wanted to make sure that all of this effort that we put to produce is stacks well. So if a student starts at a career center and takes a piece of that curriculum, they don't have to repeat it when they get to the next step. That that learned information stays with them. If they came from a parallel industry sector and want to make the leap into uh, semiconductor manufacturing, they didn't have to start from the beginning. Right? We have a lot of adults that we're centering on uh, bringing into this, into this sector. We want to make sure we're honoring the work and, and the and experience and, and the life that they've had prior to being interested in a new career without having to start all over. So all of this was done very purposefully. We built our curriculum in modular formats, and I'm going to go through this in, in uh, detail, so that we don't have to offer it just for, in the credit side of the house. It doesn't have to be a three credit hour course at a community college. It could be in a workforce and it could be a part of it because uh, you might have candidates in your region that only need one piece. They have other industry background and they don't need all of it. And we wanted to make sure that all of it connects going forward so that any point that a student comes in, earns a credential, earns a workforce credential, whatever it is, that they can always come back and they can always add to that as they think about their career trajectory and what they want to do when they grow up and what opportunities might be available to them uh, 10 years from now that all of it stacks so that they can start at any one of our partners, whether it's high school, career center, and continually work their way toward a bachelor degree and beyond and always have that work make sense and have continuity. So we were very purposeful in our work, and we didn't get started until December. <laughs> our, our faculty panel came together in December 6th or 7th for the very first meeting. We spent two days together, and then they rolled up their sleeves and started cranking work out. And then Ohio Department of Higher Education uh, impaneled, we started meeting with them in January and keeping them well connected to the work we were doing. And then we brought the university uh, partners together and set up our TAG panel and our CTAG panel. All of that happened in less than six months. <laughs> we, were, we were ready to have product to be evaluated in April. So it really has been an amazing, an amazing um, path. 
So uh, making sure that um, we thought about our, 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 uh, our regions as we haven't really figured out who all the uh, supply chain partners will be yet. So we've uh, focused on um, what we knew we had to get together for Intel, but then we were thinking about how uh, the rest of the state would be getting um, uh, manufacturers in their region, and then the EV uh, information has come out more recently. And all of that has fit really well with what our strategy was, was to make sure that everything that we produced was adaptive so that regional uh, institutions could really serve who was the companies that were coming into their community, as well as providing candidates that might be fitting into um, uh, the Intel uh, pathway in central Ohio. Uh, so we focused on uh, the entry level technician and what we looked at were what were all the different um, materials that we were being taught in our engineering technology programs across the state. And Columbus State did a, a gap analysis and we came up with some specific uh, um, coursework that needed to be done to really produce that technician that had the skill sets to be uh, a candidate for an uh, Intel uh, manufacturing technician employee. Uh, so we looked at um, all the different um, uh, uh, work uh, materials that were going to be needed, and we made sure that we were looking for candidates uh, who would be trained in how to use tools and how to um, uh, imagine themselves working on a 12-hour shift, if it were, in a bunny suit, uh, being exposed or being uh, working around uh, chemicals that they may not have heard of before, and have a sense of comfort about how that, that how that will impact uh, their day-to-day -day work. So all of this material that we produced was really focused on uh, making sure that the candidates come in early in the process and have an understanding of what, it, what it, um, the work is gonna entail in the tech sector so that they wouldn't be investing in six months and finding out uh, on the first day of the job, I can't work in a bunny suit all day. So we're really trying to incorporate all of that workforce reality right from the beginning, right in the early onset of their training. We wanted to make sure that they're aware of the safety uh, materials so they wouldn't be spooked by chemicals that were being used, so they have a good, uh, solid understanding of what um, safety materials and safety equipment will be required of them. Um, and we wanted to make sure um, that uh, we don't scare off a wide sector of our community that might be math phobic. So from the very beginning, we thought about our curriculum incorporating and blending in a contextualized format math into the curriculum so that they weren't being required to take a math course separate from the uh, training that they were getting in the certificate, that that math would be built in with the hopes of completing that certificate would give them the confidence, hey, I did it. I can do math. And my whole family have said we're not math people, we're wrong. Right? And it's hard for us to convince students of that when they see math on the, on the curriculum. So they won't see math on the curriculum, it'll be in the curriculum, right? And it'll be applied. And they'll be learning how to do math because it makes sense, they'll be using their hands. Which makes me, uh, remembers, uh, reminds me that we had to make sure that they knew what tools were, right? So we have a lot of folks that are coming into the sector that may have not have used simple tools. We wanted to make sure that was well um, well embedded into our curriculum and that our curriculum was being taught in a hands-on format. So all of these courses that I'll be talking about today are lab-based with students getting a lot of time to build competency and confidence that they can do this work and that they have to pay attention to the details uh, because as our Intel partners told us, missing one step is a critical importance that could lead to many millions of dollars in, in repair work. So the seriousness of what this, this field offers, um, as well as the, the family sustaining wages, and that this is something that people of all backgrounds can do, is really important part of how we designed our work. So let's talk about the three courses. The first one we developed um, is really an exciting one because we had pieces and parts of this all over the state. We just had never really collaborated before on it, and this project gave us that opportunity. So our manufacturing uh, foundations course 
really was an, an awesome opportunity to say what is advanced manufacturing needs when it comes to that foundational component. Making sure, as I mentioned, that tools are a part of it, that uh, working from and, and utilizing opera, uh, standard operating procedures, um, protective um, um, equipment, um, being able to really think about basic measurements and precision tools in a way that they could use their hands and make the connection uh, academically to what they were doing in the lab to what a math problem is and really making that to make sense. And this is one course that was really exciting, was not in our tag, um, uh, we didn't have this existing in our tag uh, courses in the state, and that panel was able to bring this up to a tag approval status. So this course was completed, it's modularized, uh, schools can use parts and pieces of it, they can use components in the workforce for non-credit, um, and all of our courses that we've developed are fully embedded in an, uh, in an OER. So there's no materials for the students. There's no uh, work that the faculty have to do other than putting this course into their college's format. It kind of came with the lectures, it came with the assessments, uh, the laboratory experiences, embedded videos. It is really comprehensive in what we put together in this package, and it's all modularized so it can be pulled apart and pieces of it being used as, as schools see fit. The next course was a little bit more of a challenge. This is where we really didn't have a lot of background. So in Semiconductor 101 um, was a course that when we got it together, and we really thought about what were all the different parts and pieces that um, this, this uh, candidate for an Intel manufacturing job was going to need in one of these fabs. Of course, I mentioned the bunny suit and using tools with gloves on and really understanding all of that is built into it. Um, but making sure that um, this is appropriate for an entry level technician is where we ran into some rubs with our university partners. It didn't fit well with what a four-year institution was thinking. So this did not go into the TAG approval, but into the C TAG approval. So I didn't skip a beat. We have this set up so that our uh, career technical centers um, can utilize this course and have that dovetail into the associate degree uh, with, with easy transfer. Um, so this course is where we'll be working in the next level as we think about what the university level might be and how we build our curriculum with an associate degree that will transfer to our university partners a semiconductor 102 or something like that makes sense that we'll need to continue to work on in that engineering track. So being really clear about that, our track is engineering technology. Right, we're creating technicians who will work with engineers, who will work with uh, folks that, uh, that have that advanced training. This course was very specific for the technician. Vacuum systems was also another, the third course that we developed. And again, this was a little daunting. Um, this course, um, we had some components of it, of, but not strictly in its uh, advanced manufacturing for uh, advanced vacuum systems. So we had hydraulics and the like, but this was a, a new course for us. So again, really critical uh, that our, our industry partners were there to help us. Um, and also the manufacturers of vacuum systems um, with one company specifically in Pennsylvania being a very key in helping us understand what a lab will look like. Uh, so we do have a, a, a basic lab figured out. Uh, this course is a, um, of all the courses that we have ready to go, this course needs equipment set up in the lab, so we're working on getting uh, the funding to allow for that to happen, and uh, hopefully we'll have vacuum courses being offered in January. Uh, but again, uh, making sure students could take apart the vacuum systems, uh, replace O-rings, and understand how tools and equipment and then testing and making sure the vacuum systems were operational are really critical to the manufacturing process. And uh, we're excited to, to learn that some of this is germane to the EV sector. So as we build these courses out and we learn more about what the EV sector needs are, uh, it's exciting that all three of these courses have some connections to that, to that sector as well as we think about that, that ecosystem. So this is what our, our pathways 
our started, this is what our initial premise would be. How are we going to build a stackable component that allows all of our education partners to participate, right? And these three courses are, are well in place here. Uh, but we also had other tag courses that we're already we're building on, so we're not starting from scratch and schools are having to add all these new courses. These three courses fit with other courses that we already had in advanced manufacturing. And as you can see, we have it built so that the technician courses feed into a associate degree. So as students were thinking about um, getting that first job, being the first in line for when the fabs open, and maybe getting hired and then thinking, gosh, I want to be able to be promoted someday. I want to be able to do other things than I'm currently doing, uh, that we have set up the pathways for a student who, who might be uh, raising a family, who can't take a year off of work. You know, thinking about all the different clients that we'll be serving and getting them ready for this career opportunity, making sure that uh, those students who are coming out of high school and ready to go right through four years, um, but others are thinking uh, technician is more for me, they can go right into an associate degree, and then all the rest are thinking, gosh, I just need to get into that job, right? So we've set this up so that um, somebody who just needs the training they need for the entry level can get that. And then maybe they're already a graduate of our, our programs. Maybe they're working in, um, in, in a parallel industry. What course do they need? to go along with what they already have instead of having to take this whole, this whole uh, sequence. So we've set it up that our associate degree then will track uh, into a baccalaureate degree and that is a really a key component of what we'll be doing in year two is making sure um, that we have standardized curriculum for those associate degrees so that a student who starts at one institution but because of their career or whatever uh, ends up in another community can pick right up where they left off that we've standardized that curriculum across the state so that we're not creating really unique challenges for our students, uh, which always leads to more time and, and more money. So we're really trying to think from a very strategic uh, workforce development point of view that our students who come to us can start and finish anywhere, right? That they can transfer back and forth, that they can continue to go to school while they're uh, engaged in the workforce, uh, raising their families, paying their bills, and still picking up a college course or two and working toward those, those goals for them. So we have it built out to a baccalaureate degree, but we're, we're surely hopeful that, that students will go beyond that as well. And then my last slide um, is really thinking about the model that we've built, right? So um, uh, my colleagues from ODHE, their leadership team, and I have meet every, we meet every Tuesday. Uh, we still meet every Tuesday. The faculty panel that built the curriculum is done, but we're still meeting because we have so much to do, so many things to figure out. We have to make sure that the career centers are connecting to this well. Uh, they have some unique challenges of how to get their credentials figured out, so we have folks working on that. Uh, we're looking at every rock that we need to turn over to think about how we really reach everybody in our communities, that everybody thinks of this as an opportunity, that advanced manufacturing is not grandpa's manufacturing, right? That they're really realizing that this is a truly a career path that uh, will start and, and, and have a lot of lucrative, lucrative opportunity for them as they think about career advancement, um, about moving on into retirement, that it's seamless. And that's been a really important part of what we're doing. So this whole idea of nimble curriculum design is something that's really exciting. Something that we should be talking about across the country if we're successful. We're off to a really good start. We can't stop here, right? We're just beginning. We have so much more work to do to make sure these next steps are done. Uh, what, what we got done in six months is a testament to the fact that we can do it. We have, we have the faculty expertise here in Ohio, right? Something for us to be really proud of. We have the willingness to work together, right? The panels that got these TAG and CTAG approvals done, you wouldn't believe how fast that happened, right? So that means Ohioans are recognizing what we need to do to be competitive in this, in this new environment. And I think that's something for us to be exceptionally proud of. 
Um, and I think the whole advanced manufacturing option, as we think about bringing that curriculum further along, is really giving some, uh, some credible thought to what uh, we were asked to do from the beginning, is build an ecosystem. So with that, I, that's my last slide. If I'll, there are any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joyce Mullaney, and I am the superintendent of the Career and Technology Education Centers of Licking County, CTEC, as most of you know. Um, thank you, Lieutenant Governor Houston, for your ongoing support of career technical education, skills training, our, our Ohio technical centers across the state. Um, just fabulous, and we really appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Berry, for your ongoing engagement and making sure that we are in the loop with this. And uh, thank you to the Ohio uh, Semiconductor Collaboration Network. You said so many things that um, are so important. You talked about the ecosystems. You talked specifically about career technical education, our high school students, as well as our Ohio Technical Centers. And it is... Um, we're just thrilled to be considered a, a part of that ecosystem. We do so much of that training. I'd like to believe that I'm not just rec uh, representing CTEC here, but other career technical centers across the state and um, OTCs across the state. Now here locally, we do focus quite a bit, especially through our um, Ohio Technical Center on advanced manufacturing. So that is something that we continue to collaborate very closely uh, with COTC and, and Columbus State as well. Um, on, on how we can create that seamless pathway for the students who are interested at high school level, um, adult level, uh, on to associate degrees. Those pathways are so very important. And I would like to say, too, that we are also very much aware of the surrounding ecosystem of the construction needs, the welders, the, manu or the contractors, the um, electricians, those those support systems that are going to be ongoing, not not only for Intel, but for um, the supplier the supplier network um, as as we come in. So it has been a fabulous um, journey. And and when I was hearing you talk about all the curriculum and how quickly that happened, I think of a, a group of us from Central Ohio, Licking County, and Central Ohio meeting Jim for the first time in Chandler at the plant last March, thanks to Christy from Jobs Ohio. And the conversations we had, oh, what do we do about the clean room? How do we train this? And in starting back then and see the, the progression and all the work that, uh, that the network has done is just, just amazing. So um, career technical education, um, K through 12, our OTCs that serve our adults and have really um, mastered the one-year certificate over time. So we look forward to, not just here in Looking County, but across the state, look forward to continuing partners with this, because this is a fabulous curriculum. And, and again, we really appreciate all of the support in this room for folks that really can see the, the collaboration and the network. Um, I will shout out, and I have shared this widely, here in Licking County, we have a history of collaboration. And we work very closely, I work very closely with our Educational Service Center representative, all of our K-12 superintendents. We, we know each other, we collaborate. CTEC in particular collaborates closely with business and industry partners. And Ohio means jobs and Jobs Ohio. So um, I think we can be stood up as a model for advancing this and um, for that I am very appreciative um, to all of you. Appreciate being here today and again this this is fabulous. Thank you so much. And Christy, I believe you're up next. Thanks, Joyce. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, President Berry, for hosting us, Lieutenant Governor, and other guests today. I'm Christy Klaus. I'm the Senior Managing Director of Talent for Jobs Ohio. Jobs Ohio is the state's private economic development corporation, um, and we're excited to be here today. Our role in leading economic development for Ohio is to attract and retain companies in 10 key sectors, a new one in semiconductors. 
Team Ohio, which incorporates the administration and leadership from Lieutenant Governor and the Governor to our local partners at the local government level, state agencies, ourselves, the Jobs Ohio network partners like One Columbus here in Central Ohio, utility partners, workforce and educational partners, and many others. That's Team Ohio, and I think from Intel's perspective and talking with them, um, they have been a uni unifying front for all of us to rally around Team Ohio and not only win the project, but continue to ensure that they are successful here in the state of Ohio. Since Intel first came on our radar two years ago, it's been my honor to be part of Team Ohio, living and breathing all things Intel, as well as the rest of the state and other projects we've been working on. My, me and my team uh, in the talent unit at Jobs Ohio has helped the company power up its employee strategy for the amazing new facilities coming online in Licking County. At Jobs Ohio, our team helps companies like Intel build a talent strategy, help them navigate local and uh, state resources, identify recruiting gaps where they exist, and expedite workforce solutions to help them achieve their goals all while trying to make sure we're being mindful to raise the tide for the greater good and for all Ohioans. One of the reasons that Intel chose Ohio is because of our educational system and our proven ability to harness our four-year universities, our two-year community colleges, and our technical centers, and to make sure that that talent that is necessary for their fabs to be successful continues to be grown here and expanded here. As you've heard today, part of Intel's commitment was an investment to grow in the semiconductor talent in Ohio, and specifically Intel awarded $2.8 million for community colleges and the semiconductor network collaboration. So it's exciting to see all of the work come to fruition. Um, and in true Team Ohio spirit, we already have the two programs Rick identified already on, on Ohio Link and shared, and more coming um, to make sure that that is shared across our system and to make sure that students have a very smooth pathway um, in the semiconductor industry. Jobs Ohio is so appreciative that academic teams from Ohio's community college quickly rolled up their sleeves and you heard all of the efforts that it took to get all of that work done and the administration behind the efforts as well as the Department of Higher Ed to ensure things were moving and progressing very quickly to Jack's point, quicker than Maybe we don't have the record, but we know it was faster than before. Um, and built successfully performing programs um, to make sure that we are meeting the semiconductor needs uh, going, going forward. The reputation of our community colleges and other institutions are definitely things that we tout as we go across the country and within Ohio to help companies grow here. We're always talking about how um, fabulous our education system is besides our workforce uh, or our work ethic. It's around our educational workforce partners and we can continue to tout it um, on an even bigger scale now. The career pathways that these teams have built will result in life-changing economic opportunities for thousands of Ohio students and their families and will go a long way towards helping this new and dynamic industry thrive in our state. I am proud to be part of Team Ohio and excited to see Ohio take full advantage of this once in a generation opportunity. We're here today to talk about helping more Ohioans pursue rewarding in-demand careers at Intel, but at the same time, we know that this increased collaboration by Ohio's community colleges will strengthen our ability to serve other leading businesses that are also coming to our state, and we look forward to reaping the benefits of this collaboration for years to come. People who want to take advantage of these kinds of careers and pathways should be looking to their, to their community colleges and technical centers to ensure they know how to access these programs. Thank you, and with that, it is my pleasure to turn it over to Jim Evers from Intel. Thank you so much. I'm Jim Evers, the uh, Vice President and General Manager for Intel Ohio. And as somebody who went through uh, two years of community college, this day is absolutely special. It's been nearly a year since Governor DeWine, Lieutenant Governor Husted, Jobs Ohio, and the educators came together to, as part of our ceremony groundbreaking. Um, that was a wonderful moment, and since then we've been busy with finishing the excavation work, 
and pouring concrete in what has to be one of the largest basements here in Ohio. So, We also named the site Ohio One because it's a nod to the storied history of Ohio being part of the first. Whether it was Jerry Mock's first solo flight or the, the giant leap uh, that we took to the moon with um, uh, Neil Armstrong, Ohio is comfortable being first. And Ohio One will be another first in our state because we will lead the leading edge technology in the Ohio, Midwest, and America. And we're proud with the creation of the Silicon Heartland. Once established, the Silicon Heartland will be the new epicenter for leading edge technology and help rebalance the global semiconductor supply chain. Since moving here, I get asked, why did Intel choose Ohio? And it certainly was part of the robust infrastructure that we see, the state's history of being a manufacturing powerhouse, and also because of the world-class career and tech schools, colleges, and universities. Access to top talent is a priority for Intel and for the semiconductor ecosystem that you heard about coming to Ohio. The impact's gonna be profound. A semiconductor fab is not like other factories. Building a site like this is like building a small city, which brings forth a vibrant community and services and suppliers. In addition to our presence in Ohio, the investment is expected to attract dozens of ecosystem partners and suppliers needed to provide local support for Intel's operations. This is semiconductor equipment suppliers, material suppliers, and all the services that surround that. The complexity of our operations, technology, and processes requires specialized skills. Our operation in Ohio and the suppliers' operations are going to require top talent. Demand in technical fields is only going to tighten in the future years and drive a need for industry to collaborate with education and um, each other to build a pipeline of talent and bolster research programs across the U.S. In the coming decade, the semiconductor industry is set to experience substantial growth with a projected increase in the U.S. of 115,000 jobs, representing a 33% growth. This growth signifies a positive outlook for businesses and job seekers, presenting numerous opportunities for career advancement and development. At Intel, we expect to hire more than 7,000 construction workers and 3,000 full-time high-skilled employees to operate the initial two factories when they're fully functional. According to third-party economic impact study that we commissioned and published in 2021, each job at Intel is expected to support 13 other jobs indirectly. Despite the projection of 115,000 new jobs in the industry, more than half of the projected jobs, 67,000, are at risk of going unfulfilled. Of the unfilled, unfulfilled projection, 39% are projected to be technicians. Do the math on that. That's 24,000 technician jobs that could potentially be unfulfilled in the next decade. So to prepare for this workforce, we're committed to investing in the education initiatives to develop the future pipeline. We will make these important investments with an intentionality towards diversity, because where diversity thrives, innovation thrives. We acknowledge there's a gap today between market availability and population level representation in the technology workforce. We will continue to advocate for minorities and women in STEM engineering fields where our hiring practices in Ohio will aspirations one day to close that gap. Besides the innovation advantage, increasing our representation and tapping into the diverse population is an obvious solution to the risk of the unfilled positions that I mentioned previously. We take seriously our role in contributing to the economic growth and development of the state and the greater prosperity of our fellow Ohioans. It is a remarkable display of teamwork, 
our community colleges at OACC, as well as the Ohio Technical Colleges, as well as the career centers have joined forces, swiftly adapting to the changing needs and creating innovative curriculum to fast track our workforce and ensure a skilled and agile workforce is to excel at the landscape that we have in front of us in our industry. This is an example of collaborative teamwork, the spirit that I heard about when I relocated to Ohio and I'm amazed to see it happen in real time. There is something very special about the Midwest and Ohio work ethic and willingness to do whatever it takes to win. Ohio definitely was built for this. We're thrilled that Ohio's answered the call to reshore these jobs uh, of manufacturing into the US and help rebalance the semiconductor supply chain. We're grateful for the support over the last year and I wanna to thank to all those that have brought the project to life. Thank you to the DeWine and Houston administration, to the Ohio legislator, to US congressional and Senate representatives to support Intel in Ohio. Thank you to Jobs Ohio, and to the passionate administrators and education um, administrators at OACC, CTEC, COTC, and other advanced learning institutions in the region for their tremendous progress. And a special thank you to Dr. Barry for hosting this wonderful event here today. The future is bright, and I am looking forward to Intel and Ohio growing the semiconductor ecosystem and establishing the Silicon Heartland for many decades to come. Thank you. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, we're a little ahead of time. So that, unfortunately for you, means I have extra time at the mic. <laughs> so I wanted to let you know as we do close, what is the culmination of all what you just heard today? Are we actually seeing movement and momentum already with the curriculum adoptions, with the implementation, with the collaborations between obviously our education entities, the ecosystems, but also our workforce providers? So I'm going to give you just a, a quick little synopsis of a, a case study. Right now with our friends at Jobs Ohio, they were able to work with us on a marketing campaign introducing this system, basically just internal to our Licking County representatives and those that we serve. We can share with you that just through three weeks of engagement on two social media platforms, so remember only two, this is talking Facebook and this is talking Instagram, that we've had literally hundreds of individuals come forward and say, I'm interested in this, what do I do? How do I access it? Where do I go? We're talking 340 plus individuals in a three week span on two social media platforms alone. So the power that this is going to have is immense. There's a lot of heavy lift to do. You heard that today, but there is so much interest and so much opportunity. It is our need as a entire community to make sure people are aware. These opportunities are here. They are golden. They are substantive and the door is wide open. So having said that, we thank you again for your attendance today. Each of you was selected to be here purposefully because of who you are and what you do. As you've heard, the semiconductor and advanced manufacturing industries are vibrant opportunities to so provide success for all Ohioans. And we are thrilled to provide those prosway, uh, pro, excuse me, pathways to prosperity. We thank each of you who continue to support these efforts and serve as advocates and collaborators. We look forward to continuing this successful venture well into the future. I would like to invite any of the members of the media to stay and talk to any of the presenters that you saw today. We're gonna to make ourselves available if you have follow-up questions or want to, to know any more information about what you heard today. That's uh, true of you as attendees as well. We thank you for your participation and keep doing the good work that you do. Thank you all very much.